Hey, I like movies, as much as you can probably tell, but I also like video games. In particular, I like Halo, and if you haven't played it, then who are you missing out? There's something missing. I wish I could combine both Halo and movie into one. A sort of Halo movie. I wish a group of talented filmmakers and a number of corporations could make this a reality. The year is 2001. Microsoft enters the home console market with its new Xbox and a bunch of eh launch titles. Except for one, Halo Combat Evolved, a sci-fi military first-person shooter game developed by then-indie developer Bungie. A shooter? On a console? And you expect it to sell well? And successful it was. It became a hit, getting tons of critical praise from both fans and the industry, and being the killer app that cemented Xbox's standings in the console market. It didn't take too long for Hollywood to take notice of all this good press and saw the potential in adapting Bungie's new IP in some way. Joseph Staten, the lead writer and cinematics director of Halo, met with Hollywood producers who were interested in developing Halo into a feature film. Though Staten and company were certainly intrigued and not opposed to a Halo movie, the initial offer was turned down due to a lack of guaranteed creative control. See, Bungie has always valued their creative freedom, which is something that they made very clear when they were bought by Microsoft. And whenever a non-Bungie Halo product is made, they always implemented strict ground rules for whoever was helming those projects. In a now-missing forum post by Staten titled The Great Hollywood Journey Part 1, he explains that another big reason for the offer being declined was the fact that they could now be tasked with developing a movie on top of Combat Evolved's sequel, Halo 2. And let me tell you, if you've heard anything about Halo 2's development, you know they probably couldn't afford to tackle anything else on top of it. Staten gave a thanks-but-no-thanks response to the producers, and both parties went their separate ways. The timing and circumstance just wasn't there. Cut to 2004. Just before Halo 2's launch, Peter Schlesel, a Hollywood producer, met with Bungie to discuss a movie project once again, although his idea was much different. Instead of selling the rights over to Hollywood and letting them get to do everything, Schlesel tells them, finance the script yourselves, hire a writer, have him write something you love, and then bring it to Hollywood with a simple message. This is the movie we want to make, who wants to make it with us? This was perfect because it gave Bungie a much more intimate involvement with the script development. Instead of them asking for a seat at the writer's table, they were now going to use their own table. The writer Bungie and Schlesel approved was Alex Garland. Joseph Staten and Marty O'Donnell, Halo's composer and audio director, saw a midnight screening of the film 28 Days Later, of which Garland wrote. The two loved the movie and immediately put his name into the running of potential writers. On February 3rd, it was announced that Microsoft struck a million dollar deal with Garland to write the screenplay for Halo, of which it then would be shopped around Hollywood. After reading the completed first draft of the script, Staten was thoroughly impressed with what Garland had. If they just stuck with the game story beat for beat, it wouldn't have a very good narrative flow. It was important for Garland to take creative liberties with the franchise he was given, not only to create a better on-screen story, but to give a different experience of watching the film versus just playing the game. In June 2005, Microsoft sent the script around to various Hollywood producers with conditions, a $10 million licensing fee, as well as granting Bungie creative control over the project, along with wanting approval over director and cast, full merchandising rights for itself, a minimum $75 million production budget, and company representatives full access to the film's rough cut in LA. Halo 2 had just come out a few months prior, in November of 04, and was even more popular than the first game, in large part due to its online multiplayer, of which the first game lacked. Despite this popularity, many studios such as Paramount, Sony, DreamWorks, and Warner Brothers passed on the project mainly due to the demand for shared creative rights. The absolute nerve of Bungie. Later that month, however, 20th Century Fox and Universal Studios entered negotiations to divide the distribution rights of Halo between the two of them. The price tag was slashed from $10 million down to 5 with 10% of the box office gross. The deal stated that while Universal would handle North American distribution, Fox would handle it overseas. In October, it was announced Peter Jackson, hot off the success of the Lord of the Rings trilogy and his King Kong remake, would step in as executive producer for Halo. This is when the project really began to take shape. Not only did they have major studio backing and a huge IP, but now they had name recognition and a very valuable one at that time. Hello, 
I'm Peter Jackson and I just wanted to say how excited I am to be an executive producer on the Halo movie. I've been a big fan of Halo ever since the game came out and I played Halo 2 while we were making King Kong, raced home at night, couldn't wait to get back and carry on playing it and I'm just an absolute devotee of the incredible world and universe that Bungie created, helping to guide this film through to what I hope will be a really incredible, memorable cinematic experience. So, thank you. I'm looking forward to it. Can't wait. The movie was slated for a summer 2008 release. Production of the film began to gain momentum over the course of 2006. On July 13th, author D.B. Weiss of Game of Thrones fame revealed in an interview that he was writing a second draft of Halo, mainly using elements from Garland's original draft. What they now needed was a director. Guillermo del Toro, famous for his work on Hellboy and the then upcoming Pan's Labyrinth was in talks, however he backed out to work on Hellboy 2, The Golden Army. Peter Jackson then picked a young South African native named Neil Blomkamp to direct the film. Yeah, Blomkamp was a newcomer, alright. In fact, he was so new Halo was going to be his featured directorial debut. Before this, he had gained attention to his work on a series of Nike commercials. I came out of the meeting with them. And Ari's like, Peter Jackson wants you to fly to New Zealand to talk about doing Halo. And I was like, holy shit. Principal photography of the movie was set to be filmed in Jackson's native country of New Zealand, where his Lord of the Rings trilogy had famously been filmed. Looking at the cinematography of Lord of the Rings, it's a no-brainer they decided to shoot there, as the games present a world that is unspoiled and almost artificial looking just as the movies do. It also allowed Jackson to utilize his Oscar-winning effects studio, Weta Workshop, to design the large array of props and sets needed for the film. Well, we were, <laughs> I'll tell you, we were, I didn't get to work with Peter Jackson, but he came to the studio. I have video of him in our studio walking around, and you know, a few of our folks went out to New Zealand and stayed with Peter, and I remember Joe emailing me saying, I'm sleeping in, you know, Frodo's house because <laughs> uh, it's there. It, it's, yeah, he, Peter Jackson actually has it, and you can you can go there, and if you're a guest of his, you can sleep in the underground uh, Hobbit Hobbit and Hobbit the Hobbit hole. Well, everything was shaping up at this point. Major studios backing a new and popular property, an executive producer bringing name recognition, a director, a script, and even casting rumors such as Ron Perlman reprising his role from the games as Lord Hood. Nothing could go wrong. In October of 2006, Universal and Fox wanted to pull out of the deal. A representative of Peter Jackson and his wife and creative partner, Fran Walsh, stated, Universal, on behalf of both studios, asked for a meeting with the filmmakers just prior to the due date of a significant payment. Basically, they said in order to move forward with the film, the filmmakers had to significantly reduce the percentage of profits they would receive from the film. They waited until the last minute to have this conversation. Peter and Fran, after speaking with the producing partners and with Microsoft and Bungie, respectfully declined. At this point, the movie was in development hell and production was stalled. In an interview with Cinematical.com in mid-2007, Jackson stated he expects the movie to continue development when studios catch a glimpse of Halo hype firsthand with the release of Halo 3 that September. During this time, Blomkamp was still working on Halo and produced a series of shorts titled Halo Landfall which detailed the events just prior to Halo 3. These shorts acted as both advertising for Halo 3 but also a sort of proof of concept for the movie, essentially saying to people, hey, this is what the movie's gonna look and feel like. The shorts even feature a fully functioning warthog Weta made for the film. Please let me drive that, please, I wanna drive it, I'll be good. On October 4th, 2007, Neil Blomkamp announced that the movie was officially dead. However, Bungie's content manager, Frank O'Connor, was quick to deny the statement when speaking with Game Informer. Later on that April, Stuart Beatty, the writer behind the G.I. Joe series, wrote three spec scripts for potential Halo films titled Halo Fall of Reach, Halo The Rise of the Flood, and Halo The Battle of Earth. Originally, this was expected to be an April Fool's joke, but later confirmed to be genuine, though it is unclear if these were to replace the Garland and Weiss script or intended to be their own series. In June, Phil Spencer said there was still tremendous interest in a Halo film. He is quoted saying, We want to make sure, whenever we translate it to the big screen, that it's going to be a movie worthy of the IP, so we're going to be very careful about how we proceed there. 
In 2009, Neil Blomkamp officially declared he was no longer involved in the project. He said this during a panel at San Diego Comic-Con alongside Peter Jackson as they were promoting the new Blomkamp-directed, Jackson-produced sci-fi action movie, District 9. Well, I mean, most of you probably know the, the, uh, the backstory that we, for a period of time, were intending to make a, uh, a feature film adaptation of the Halo video game. And we were developing that. It was a Universal and Fox co-production. Suitably impressed. I mean, really impressed by what we saw. And Mary immediately jumped on a plane with Neil, flew down to New Zealand. And and but you know, Neil, we thought would be absolutely terrific choice to, to direct it. And then Halo just suddenly, um, basically died, dropped dead on its feet. We immediately thought, well, why don't we just try to take control of the situation in whatever way we're able to? And we suggested the idea of. of working on an original idea, something we could own, that we weren't beholden to studio politics, keep the budget low, we can hopefully raise the money independently, and let's just turn this whole creative energy that was, you know, being spent on Halo, put it directly into a different project. And Neil had made a short film called Alive in Joburg. It was a really terrific idea that we thought would make a great feature film. First met Neil when we were considering the production of a uh, film called Halo based on the video game. As it was, Halo never happened. The moment that film collapsed, when I was getting ready to sort of pack up and leave, Fran Walsh, it was actually Fran's idea, she was like, why don't we just keep all of the momentum and the energy going that we have here and just do another film. So many of the sort of underlying ideas for District 9, 9 came from some of the brainstorming sessions that they had with Peter Jackson. And even the weapons that they use as props in District 9 are just uh, Halo props <laughs> that were going to be part of the Halo series, it's just spray-painted white. A few knobs taken off and spray-painted white, and then they use those weapons. So Joe looks at that, and he's like, oh, what might have been? What could have been? So, what could have been? Well, Blomkamp... I love District... District 9 is a great movie, by the way. Yeah. So wait, you're telling me that District 9 is technically the Halo movie? At this point, you can guess that the movie project is essentially dead. Peter Jackson expressed in an interview that it was studio politics which killed the film and that Microsoft was still trying to find their footing in Hollywood, as this was their first real film-related venture. During this time, Microsoft said that Jackson's film was still being made, although Jackson himself never confirmed or denied this. District 9 went on to be a hit at the box office and received four Academy Award nominations including Best Picture and Best Adapted Screenplay for Blomkamp himself and essentially jumpstarted his career in feature filmmaking. Landfall has gone on to be a fan favorite among the Halo community and is widely regarded as the best live action Halo project to date. A spokesperson from Microsoft said that they were glad there was still a lot of enthusiasm for a film-related project, but that it's on hold until further notice so that they and Bungie could focus their efforts on Halo 3 ODST and Halo Reach. This was also coupled with the fact that Bungie had separated with Microsoft in 2007 and their 10-year contract to develop Halo games would end in 2010. So I doubt Bungie would want to entangle themselves in another Halo-related project which could potentially take years to finish. And that's as far as the Halo film goes, really. And to this day, we still don't have a full theatrical feature-length adaptation of any of the Halo games yet. In 2010, an anthology anime film called Halo Legends was released. And as far as live action, we have Forward Unto Dawn, released on YouTube in 2012, and Halo Nightfall, produced by Ridley Scott in 2014, are and released on the now-defunct Halo Channel app. Both of these, however, received mixed reviews and little mainstream attention. During the reveal of the Xbox One console in 2013, Spielberg announced he is producing an official Halo TV series, which is set to premiere on the Paramount Plus streaming service in early 2022. Over the years, Blomkamp said he is still interested in being involved in some sort of Halo-related project, but due to his circumstance working on the Jackson project, he doesn't see himself getting in the director's chair anytime soon. Where it's like, you remember the 80 crew members that are working right now and like the vehicles you built and all the armor and all that shit that Weta's making? Yeah? Okay, that's all done. Pack your bags, go back to Canada. Yeah. Oh. That's like, whoa, 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 wait, wait, what? I mean, I, like, I, I yes, the answer time. is yes. The answer is, is, the answer is completely yes. Twist, they want you to make it in 3D. And and they have to be Muppets. <laughs> oh yeah. Like a puppet, a puppet version of Halo. That could be interesting. I want Puppet Halo. 
Halo has certainly made its mark on pop culture outside of the world of gaming as it gave way to the creation of a Best Picture nominated film as well as still being relevant to this day. The script leaked online and I have read it being a fairly faithful adaptation of Combat Evolved. It was also being developed when the franchise was at an all-time high in terms of popularity and would have capitalized greatly from this. It really feels like the studios weren't aware of what they had. Could we still ever get a Halo movie or series of Halo movies in the future? It certainly is possible, especially since the franchise is receiving a second win from Halo Infinite launching, but this specific script and project ever seen the light of day? Doesn't seem likely. It's undeniable that the movie would have been a hit with critics and audiences. Halo is a unique property in that it has a very cinematic quality to it. In 2014, Oscar-winning effects house Blur Studio was tasked in recreating the cutscenes of Halo 2 for the then-upcoming Halo 2 anniversary. Taking a look at the cutscenes, you can tell it's a franchise that is just begging to be made into a movie and with the right care and vision that can certainly be done. Given the trend of video game adaptations, this would have been a breath of fresh air and could have potentially changed the way video game films are made and how Hollywood treats them. As video game movies become more popular with the likes of the recent Mortal Kombat, Monster Hunter, and the upcoming Last of Us TV series, video game adaptations seem to be edging their way into the normal repertoire of summer blockbusters. Here's hoping for the TV series as well as any future adaptation of Halo that may come.